Hello everyone. How are you today? My name is Elizabeth Willett, Senior Fertility Herbalist with the Natural Fertility Company. You know us, I, I suppose, as the naturalfertilityshop.com and naturalfertilityinfo.com. Um, today we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to continue on with our emotional health conversation. That has been my stint for the last several weeks. We've talked about um, coping with the emotions of infertility and while you're on this journey. And through the holidays and elections and all sorts of different things, we've covered um, tons of stuff so far. But I realized this morning, just out of the blue kind of, that we have yet to talk about PMS. And we all know that that is an incredibly emotional time for some of us. So um, I wanted to come on and talk a little bit about PMS and emotional health if you are sadly one of the sufferers um, who sufferers of PMS. So many of us have some degree of PMS. It's different for everybody. And some women luckily don't have it. Um, I wish that I was one of them, but that isn't the case. <laughs> Uh, PMS symptoms can range from just general sluggishness and being tired to having PMS as premenstrual syndrome, excuse me. So um, this is all of these things I'm going to talk about next. Premenstrual syndrome can be, like I said, anywhere from um, gentle fatigue and tiredness to extreme fatigue and tiredness. It can be cramps, it can be pain before and during your period. But essentially a lot of what PMS is, is emotional health stuff, um, irritability, anger, depression, um, fidgeting, uh, not, you know, just not being happy with anything. Um, some people get really, really angry and kind of have rage and just blow up out of, out of the blue on a whim. Um, that actually is my case. I have one day of horrid rage. I call it my day of rage. Um, thankfully I know when it's coming and I know what sets it off. So I'm now able to control myself and help myself through that. And, and, um, and or warn my poor husband that it's happening. But it can really be a range of anything. Some women have PMS so bad that they have, um, or and have so much pain that they get diarrhea and get nauseous and throw up. Um, there's a wide range of symptoms, a lot physical, but primarily it's emotional. All of those um, different emotional health uh, or emotions that come out. Um, sadness can be exacerbated. Um, stuff like that. So that's basically what premenstrual syndrome is, PMS. It typically is the week before a person's period and can be during menstruation or the period. Um, that is just a generalized amount of time. Everybody's completely different. But anyway, there's a whole lot you can do. Uh, it's really empowering, hopefully going to be empowering to know that there's a whole lot you can try and do to help yourself through the emotions and the physical manifestations of PMS. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. So um, I'm going to look down at some notes. I'm a note taker and a note reader, um, but I do want to make sure that I get correct doses for you for some of these things. So um, first of all, if you have PMS, it totally sucks, right? But here are two things you need to cut out of your diet at least at some point in that week before your period and probably even during your period. And my hope is that you've already done this. Um, because these are things we want you to avoid in general when you're battling infertility or a fertility health issue. And these are caffeine and alcohol. Both of them are known to exacerbate the symptoms of PMS and perhaps also cause, it be in part causative of PMS. Um, they can both impact hormonal balance when they're consumed um, in excessive amounts. And uh, that, of course, can exacerbate PMS and be a cause of PMS. But um, daily intake is is suggested not at all. So try not to consume it at all or cut them out entirely if you're battling PMS um, before your period and during your period. Um, some people find that cutting out gluten helps them, especially if you're um, if you find that you've got a gluten sensitivity. If you're intolerant, you probably already cut it out. But if you're sensitive or um, want to try that, you could. Some people also try to reduce their intake of any dairy, red meat. Um, and sugar. Those are other things that we've talked about numbers of times and we write about in our information um, that are best avoided um, when you're battling infertility in general, but certainly if you have PMS. They're inflammatory. Um, they increase your body's inflammation response too much that, um, that it can exacerbate those symptoms too. Mostly those physical manifestations of PMS more than the emotions, but um, I have heard from women who have gluten sensitivities that, that they're affected emotionally as well. So if you're there, consider all of those things or cutting all of those things or reducing your intake um, of them. Caffeine and alcohol for certain, 
um, dairy, red meat, sugar, and gluten. And then, um, hopefully you've already done that, like I said, so the things you can consider learning more about and taking to help yourself through the emotions and the physical manifestations of PMS are vitamin B6. Um, studies have actually shown its ability to alleviate symptoms of PMS. Uh, it helps with regulating hormones and blood sugar. Um, is drinking one cup of coffee bad? All right, you're talking to a coffee drinker, so I don't want to tell you one cup is bad. Um, you have to, one cup is the limit, really. Um, but if you have PMS, consider either decaf or trying or stopping it or not having it one day to see if it helps your symptoms. Um, but one cup isn't the end of the world. And if someone told me to stop my one cup of coffee, I would probably stick my tongue out at them. So <laughs> you do what you need to do. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, all right, so back to vitamin B6. So it's been found through studies to alleviate symptoms of PMS, and it can help regulate hormone balance um, and blood sugar levels, all very important for fertility in general. Um, general suggested use is 50 to 100 milligrams with your multivitamin or a B complex, so vitamin B6. Um, vitamin E. Um, women, women given vitamin E... Um, Every day, about 600 IUs, and this is in a study, I should um, clarify that. Um, in a, in, okay, so let me start over. Vitamin E. In one study, um, there were women who participated with that had PMS and were given uh, vitamin E, 600 IUs per day, and their symptoms were reduced overall, um, related to, particularly related to fibrocystic breasts. So that can be another symptom of PMS and hormonal changes prior to your period and during menstruation. Some women find that they've got sore um, or really sensitive breasts and they can actually feel um, tiny little hardish lumps in their breast tissue. Um, sometimes those are just fibrocystic um, lumps that are related to hormonal shifts and changes in uh, menstruation and throughout the cycle. Um, if they're incredibly painful, if they grow, 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 and don't stop. If you're concerned, you'd want to talk to your doctor because there are all sorts of different kinds of breast lumps and we certainly don't want you to overlook them if you have concern. Um, but some women do have them come and go with their menstrual cycle. So vitamin E has been found to be helpful with that. Um, can also really help with um, normalizing hormonal levels if you have PMS. So that's that, vitamin E. Calcium and magnesium are important. Uh, most of us consume these in our multivitamin and through our diet fairly regularly. You may have even added them to your supplement routine. Um, but clinical trials uh, have shown a positive relationship between um, both calcium and magnesium supplementation and reduction of P PCOS or, excuse me, PMS symptoms. Um, for calcium, the general suggested use is uh, 1,200 to 1,600 milligrams per day. And it's also um, been found best to be taken with magnesium, and magnesium at 400 to 800 milligrams a day. Um, I actually take magnesium on its own before bed. It's a muscle relaxer for me. Um, I don't take it for PMS necessarily, but after some after the research I did for this talk, I thought I'm going to try that next time too. But anyway, um, PCOS has been or PCOS. Can you tell I talk about that a lot too? PMS. Um, symptoms including fluid retention, anxiety, painful menstruation, um, and certainly any tightness or cramping have, um, can be reduced by taking magnesium. So PMS related muscle stuff. So if you're feeling crampy and tight, um, consider some magnesium. Um, again, 400 to 800 milligrams of magnesium a day. Um, now on to some herbs or plants. Um, pycnogenol is one of them. Um, pycnogenol is actually an extract from a pine tree, uh, the maritime pine tree. It's a bark from a French tree. Um, pycnogenol was actually awarded a patent, or a company was awarded a patent for pycnogenol uh, because of its ability to re reduce PCOS symptoms, especially pain and menstruation. So um, I think I said PCOS again. PMS. <laughs> I need to retrain myself. PMS symptoms, painful menstruation. Um, so in a particular study, 30 milligrams is all it took for um, certain women to show reduction in PMS symptoms. So consider that. We've got information on naturalfertilityinfo.com about pycnogenol. It's used in other ways too. So if you're interested, um, uh, contact us. You know, 
send an email and we'll send, we'll get you information. The other one to think about, um, which is delicious in a tea, is dandelion leaf. Um, so you would make an infusion or a really strong tea. Um, it's great for liver support, which is important. Liver health is important for hormonal balance, but also for flushing. So if you had bloating uh, with PMS or any fluid retention, um, it's really important to help support the liver and dandelion leaf can be used in that way. Um, four to 10 grams of dried dandelion leaf in one quart of water. You steep it for three hours and take, uh, drink it about four times a day. So roughly four eight ounce glasses a day. Um, again, four to 10 grams of dandelion leaf in a quart of water and you steep it for three to four hours. So this is something that um, you would wanna do in advance of. It's not necessarily something to do the day of, um, if you're, you know, major PMS symptoms, but um, if you're charting your cycle and you're really in tune with your body and you know it's coming, you could prepare dandelion leaf tea in advance and have it on hand. Uh, many of you have heard of Vitex. Um, many of you are probably taking Vitex. Vitex has been shown in clinical studies to help reduce the symptoms of PMS. Um, I've heard from a lot of clients that it works fairly quickly for PMS, uh, including depression, headaches, acne, rashes, allergies, any sensitivity in the breasts, all of those things um, related to PMS. General suggested use you may know is 900 to 1000 milligrams every day. You do not have to take a break from Vitex um, when you're dealing with uh, PMS, when you're battling infertility. I'm glad you love Vitex, uh, many people do. And it's best taken first thing in the morning on an empty stomach uh, with water. So Vitex could be something that could be helpful for you or may or maybe already has helped reduce your PMS symptoms. One of my most favorite herbs of all time, motherwort. Um, motherwort is actually a really powerful herb for many reasons. Um, I've talked about it before in my scopes about how it helps with emotional health, but it also can help with painful periods, anxiety, rapid heartbeat if that were an issue you had with PMS, hot flashes, headaches, dizziness, stress, difficulty sleeping. This one kind of covers the gamut really of um, PMS symptoms. Motherwort is also really effective at um, uh, helping the uterus relax, the uterine muscle relax. So if you have cramping, uh, it may be helpful in that way too. Um, we love it as a liquid extract. Um, so consider 10 to 25 drops every five minutes the first day of um, your issues and then every two hours for the next few days until the pain is gone. Uh, motherwort is something that can be used um, on the spot um, when you need it, in, in other words. It's not something that you necessarily have to take long term or um, consistently many days before you have PMS for it to be effective. Uh, for most women, I shouldn't say that that's true across the board, but most, most of the time it can be really fast acting. Um, so anyway, uh, you would want to consider motherwort if you have any of those um, heart-related anxiety, rapid heartbeat sort of things going on with PMS. Lavender, we love lavender. Um, I talked about it when I made tea with you last week if you joined me. Lavender is really great for helping to reduce irritability, anxiety, insomnia, depression, all associated with PMS. So this is one that happens to be more beneficial for those emotional aspects of PMS. Um, we love liquid extract. You can make it into a tea or a strong infusion. Essential oils or massage oils are great. And then um, two other essential oils that I don't have a lot of information on for you, but that you could certainly consider are Rose Otto and Clary Sage. Um, I actually have all three of these oils here. Um, you know, just I have a variety of different brands. Can you see it? Is it too bright? There's my Mountain Rose Lavender. Um, my Clary Sage is from a company called Windmere. I don't know if it's, um, I don't know if they're still in business or not, but I have it. And then I actually have a Rose Absolute, um, different from Rose Auto, but it's Rose nonetheless. Um, I, this is from Ananda Apothecary. It's a really great um, essential oil company. Um, Rose Absolute is rather expensive. Uh, I actually was able to get in on a deal. <laughs> so I took advantage of getting um, the Absolute instead of Rose Auto, but Rose Auto is typically more cost effective. Um, something to consider on the line of um, oils, essential oils, as long as I'm talking about it, um, is our Radiant Womb Massage Oil. Um, we don't suggest its use during menstruation, but it would be great prior to. It's wonderful with self-fertility massage. Um, it's the most beautiful smelling thing. If you haven't tried this massage oil, um, 
I'd love to guarantee that you're gonna love it. I love it, but um, I, I am pretty sure you're really gonna like its smell. It's wonderful. It has motherwort in it, lavender, rose, and clary sage, among many other things. So this might be a way to, um, an easy way to consider starting essential oil use if you haven't yet. What else? Okay, so next, after lavender, evening primrose oil. Many of you have probably heard, you love it, it smells good, the radiant womb, yeah. Um, it is, it smells delicious. So many of you have probably heard of evening primrose oil. I don't have my bottle, but I happen to have two capsules because I grabbed them, I take them myself. Um, evening primrose oil is, um, for those who value science, has double blind crossover controlled trials <laughs> that show significant positive results for reducing PMS. Um, reduction of PMS headaches, foggy thinking, clumsiness, depression, irritability, bloating, breast tenderness, Another one that's kind of a, an all-around go-to PMS reliever, um, evening primrose oil. Fertilica has an evening primrose oil. That's our natural fertility company brand. If you're interested in learning more, we can help you um, know that. But 1,500 to 3,000 milligrams once a day um, from when your period starts until ovulation when you're actively trying to conceive. If you're not actively trying to conceive, um, you can take it all cycle long. It's also great for egg white cervical mucus production during ovulation. Um, evening primrose oil has more than PMS benefits. Yes, you're correct. Um, it is one of the things that is our go-to for um, cervical, healthy cervical mucus production or support for that. So EPO, I love this. I, like I said, I, I don't have the bottle because I took, took them out. I'm going to take these later. <laughs> um, what else? One more herb, skull cap. I don't know if you've ever heard of Skullcap, um, spelled just like it sounds, S-K-U-L-L-C-A-P. Uh, really great, wonderful stress reliever um, for the chaos, all the chaos, it doesn't matter, um, and emotional chaos. So anxiety, if you have the blues, if you're irritable, um, PMS-related mood symptoms. So we like liquid extract of Skullcap. It can be taken 30 to 60 drops three times a day or however the manufacturer of the tincture you purchase suggests it be used. And then what else? Okay, so there are natural therapies too. Hi from Canada, welcome. We're talking about PMS and how to help yourself through PMS today. Um, natural therapies to utilize or try. Acupuncture can be really effective. Yoga, um, I am a big fan of this yoga program, um, Restoring Fertility, Yoga for Optimal Fertility. The reason is because this yoga series is in four parts. There are actually poses you can do during your period, specific poses to support the healthy follicular phase, uh, an ovulatory phase um, of yoga, and then yoga during the um, um, luteal phase. Excuse me, I couldn't think of that word right off the top of my head. Uh, amazing guided yoga program. You can do it at home. You do not have to be a yoga aficionado or even have done yoga to do it. There are three women, um, three or four, three? I think three in each series showing you different um, skill sets, different ways of doing the poses um, to benefit from them no matter if you've done yoga before or not. Um, our company, all the team members on our um, in the company did this yoga practice together and we found it really beneficial and useful. So um, natural therapies, acupuncture, yoga, cold and hot packs, whatever feels good for you. Um, I have a microwavable rice pack that I use sometimes. Um, I make it nice and warm, especially when it's cold outside and I have some cramping. It helps relieve that a little bit. And then lastly, um, I guess not necessarily lastly, but um, I have a couple more things. I want you to know that if you have PMS, I understand. Uh, we are here to get you tips and share more of what I'm sharing with you now if, you, if you're struggling with it. Um, but be gentle with yourself. Listen to your body. If you can't, don't overdo it. Um, listen to your mind and your emotions and your heart. If you're struggling, if you're mad, if you're angry, if you're having a bad day, just try to walk away from whatever it is that sets you off or um, from your daily routine and um, do something nice for yourself. Have a mug of tea, go for a walk outside if you can, um, maybe exercise. Exercise um, typically helps people feel better or make a do-it-yourself PMS bath. Um, I created a do-it-yourself therapeutic bath for PMS that we have published on our site. Um, you certainly can experiment with that. Um, I've started making it here today for you so that you can see. 
Uh, super simple if you have the ingredients on hand. What it is is Epsom salts, lavender flowers, and chamomile flowers. If you joined me last week, this is the same lavender and chamomile that I made tea with. You can use them for bath salts as well. Um, so the base is Epsom salts um, for some magnesium, right? We just talked about magnesium. Lavender and chamomile for their calming, um, relaxing properties. And then you add um, eight to 10 drops of clary sage oil and three to five drops of lavender oil. There is no real hard and fast recipe here. You can experiment with whatever you like. If you don't prefer the smell of clary sage, consider a little bit less and do more lavender or vice versa. Or follow the recipe, whatever you want. So what you would do is mix these items either um, all together in a jar like I have, drop in the essential oils on top of the salt, um, and then pour them into a piece of cheesecloth, um, an older um, dish drying towel, some piece of thin fabric, and tie it around the spigot of your bathtub and let your bath fill through that. The plants will, um, the plants will be steeped like tea and the magnesium in the essential oils will, um, that, well, the magnesium will dissolve and take the essential oils into your bath and then you can soak uh, for as long as you want. Another way to do this would be to make a really, really strong tea, infuse the water with um, lavender and chamomile. So make a strong tea in a, in a quart jar or however much water you want really um, and let it steep for a while and then once it's cooled down to where you can actually touch it and it won't hurt you, you would pour the tea in the bath water and then put your essential oil filled Epsom salts in the bath water, stir it around and just jump right in. Um, if you want the specifics and the recipe, we have it on uh, naturalfertilityinfo.com. It's called DIY Therapeutic Bath for PMS. Um, I've got this one ready for next month <laughs> or next cycle, I guess. Um, that's why I didn't add essential oils to it again. Um, I keep it on hand. You can get Epsom salts at any pharmacy. They're, they're available in most any pharmacy. And I just store a single use. Um, I typically only use it once, but you certainly could use it multiple days in a row in a, in a quart jar um, in my bathroom. So anyway, um, be gentle with yourself. Take a bath if you love baths. Go for a walk. Walk away from your to-dos. Um, learn your triggers so that you can help yourself through them and avoid them. And then hopefully all of the things that we've talked about so far will recap. Cutting out caffeine and alcohol. Um, trying vitamins B6 and E. Calcium and magnesium. Um, and any of the herbs that we talked about, Vitex, Evening Primrose Oil, Pycnogenol, Lavender, um, or a DIY bath will all be helpful for you. So I hope that um, you feel empowered to have some of these tools on hand to help you through PMS. They certainly can be really, really beneficial uh, in more ways than one. Last thing I have to say for you, um, shameless product plugging. I also really love Uteracalm. I don't know who else has tried Uteracalm here today, but this is one of my most favorite things for cramps. Um, yeah, it's just my go-to for cramps. When I'm having my crampy day, even when I have ovulation pain, and when it happens, it's not regular. I'm glad you love it. I do too. Um, you can consider using Uteracalm. Um, you know, Maca may help. Maca has the ability to nourish the endocrine system, therefore hopefully helping begin that hormone balance process. And when your hormones are balanced, PMS can be gone. Um, you don't have to have PMS because you menstruate. It's not, it doesn't have to happen. So if Maca works for you, that's great. I'm so glad. Um, some people will find that that's true. Magnesium oxide. You know, there are many different forms of magnesium. Um, I think what Ultimately, it is important is that you find one that works best for you. I know that there are some forms of magnesium that can make you have diarrhea if you take too much. Uh, it's not that that's crazy harmful, it's just annoying. Um, I personally take chelated magnesium. Um, that word is C-H-E-L-A-T-E-D, chelated magnesium. It's easier to digest. Um, but it would be something to talk to a pharmacist or doctor about if you're wondering what the best form of magnesium is. I'm sure they'll have their opinion. Um, but certainly just try try what's economical for you or what you find. Or even talk to someone in a Whole Foods or a co-op um, or health food store natural health department. They should know the differences or what's available. Um, and then one more shameless product plug. If you have PMS 
and irregular cycles, um, irregular menstrual cycles, you perhaps may get some support from Fertilicare Phase 1 and 2. This is our Fertilica brand. Um, Fertilicare is a biphasic formula that Heather Rodriguez, the site's founder, formulated for um, healthy reproductive a healthy reproductive system, but also menstrual cycle health. There are two phases. So phase one you take during your um, follicular phase, and phase two you take during the luteal phase to support hormone balance, but they contain Vitex, which we talked about um, for helping reduce PMS and support hormonal balance and many other things. Um, phase one, for example, excuse me, phase two in preparation for menstruation, so we would take it during your luteal phase, um, contains some maca, cramp bark, and dandelion like we just talked about. So it can be helpful for hopefully getting you to your period without PMS. Um, yeah, that's a lot of tools, isn't it? So you know now, there are many things that you can do to help yourself through PMS. Uh, not only the physical manifestations of it, but also the emotional manifestations of it. Um, and I hope that you find something that you like and that works for you, definitely. Um, you know, and what works for you may not work for me and vice versa. So that's why I wanted to give you all of these ideas today. All right, you guys. Well, thank you for joining me today. Um, I am one of your PMS sisters. Um, sorry, but we're in it together. And I hope that you now feel like you've got some very easy, um, cost-effective, inexpensive tools in your toolbox to help you through those days of premenstrual syndrome. And that um, by supporting continued hormonal balance, you're going to find that that goes away. That is my ultimate hope. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, I hope that your emotional support techniques are all working for you. And I'll be back next week to talk about something else. Um, can't promise it'll be emotion related anymore. I might have to shift gears. I'm kind of running out of ideas, but we'll see. Uh, I let things come to me. So anyway, um, peace to you. Have a great day. We'll see you next week. Bye.